Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, somehow or another, I'm gonna make this gas tank work in this Jeep. All right, so if you missed the last video, when I pulled the tub back off the Jeep and everything, you need to go listen to that and I'll explain why all this is back apart. But one of the main reasons the tub had to come back off was to fix this gas tank. Now, if you look up in here, you can see there's not much clearance. If you look on top, the gas tank is sitting over the axle right now. I've got roughly an inch of clearance right there. So obviously this setup's not gonna work. It was better when I did the first video, but once everything settled, the suspension settled, I put a bunch of weight on it. This was actually sitting on top of the diff cover right here. I actually have that bent in just a little bit because it was actually sitting on top of this axle. So I think the first thing I want to do, I'm going to mark anywhere I think it needs to be clearance because I'm probably going to end up cutting a chunk out of this and welding it up and making clearance in this. Now I do have this space right here between the rear cross member and the bumper. And I could take all that out and that would shift everything back this way uh, about two inches, inch and three quarters. That's going to involve a lot more work though because I'm going to have to modify my bumper and get rid of that. I'm gonna to have to cut this rear cross member out. So I think I wanna stay away from that ideal for now. I wanna see if I can make this work the way it is, even if that means getting rid of the factory skid plate that I used and build my own skid plate, because I do have all this room right here too, I can use to make up that distance. So I'm gonna go grab some tools and start unhooking stuff and pull this whole thing out. Okay, so I didn't make it too bad to pull this thing back out. I've got it roughly marked here. This is where I'm gonna need the clearance for the axle. I've got about three inches or so of travel in those shocks, so that's where I'm gonna be basing all this measurements off of, is that I have three inches of shock before that bottoms out. So this is roughly the area. I'll probably make it a square cut because it'll be easier to patch that in versus doing some kind of weird oval shaped patch. You can see this is kind of dented in right here. What that is, when it was actually like sitting on top of the axle, I actually went in there with a pry bar and pried it out of the way just so I could finish the other stuff I was working on. I didn't want to just rub it on that cover or to dent that cover in. Now I want to take this gas tank actually out of the skid plate. I want to look at it again on the Jeep without the skid plate and see how far back I can get this thing because I'm not against making my own skid plate for this if it means I don't have to do a big cutout. So I pulled the tank out of the skid plate and now I've got mocked up back over here at the Jeep. So this has picked us up a bunch of clearance. I can actually get my hand in there now. If you look down from the top, you can see this seam is up in front of this now, which is what I wanted. Okay, y'all, so I pondered on it, measured it, looked at it, and I think I've got a plan. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this rear cross member, this piece of C-channel. I'm gonna cut it back as far as I can until the seam of this gas tank butts up with the back of this. I'm probably gonna end up replacing this cross member no matter what now though, because it is kind of hacked up and I want it to look good. But going ahead and cutting that off, scooting this back, making sure that everything's gonna work is gonna give me the confidence to go forward with this ideal. I think we're gonna have to ditch that skid plate or I'm really gonna have to modify it somehow to work like this. But I really feel like I'm in good shape now that I'm not gonna have to cut out a piece of this gas tank. So I'll go ahead and scoot the plasma cutter over here. We'll go ahead and buzz this off. We'll stick it back in here and see what we got.
All right, so I got it back in here, got all this cut out. Actually, I've decided that I'm gonna put it under the rear cross member now because this is gonna be a solid piece. There's not gonna be a lip on the inside to set in. And I still wanna be able to remove this from under the Jeep. So it does need to be able to fall out of there. Over here though, we've got a bunch of room now and I think everything's gonna be fine with all that. Now that I know this is gonna work, I'll go ahead and pull the tank back out. I'm gonna cut this rear cross member out. Of course, I'll have to pull the bumper off. All right, so let's do it. I got the old cross member cut out. I threw this bar up here and tacked it in just to make sure nothing moved in case there was any stress on that cross member. You can see it was just hacked all the pieces. Of course, I just did a bunch of cutting on it anyways, but it was in there pretty good still. It fought me a little bit coming out. It's funny, you build stuff strong so it won't come apart, but then when you gotta take it apart, you got a job on your hands. So now I got this plate here. This is four inches, eighth inch thick. I'm gonna go ahead and probably plate up to maybe the top of this bend right here. Maybe even all the way up to just before this bar. Then I'm gonna box in whatever else I need to and get all this cleaned up. That's the plan. Let's go ahead and knock it out. There's my template for the first piece I'm gonna do. On vehicles, I would say always do driver and passenger instead of left and right, because you can still get confused with left and right. I just cut it out like a gasket. This is some like poster board kind of cardboard. Just tap on it, cut it out like a gasket. It gives you a good silhouette, trim it to fit. It's a little bigger than it needs to be right now, which is good. This kind of stuff, you might as well just cut it a little big and then grind it into fit. At least that's how I like to do it. All right, so let's go get this first piece of plate cut. Here's a little tech tip I wanted to share with y'all. So when you're grinding in your plate to fit, stick it up there and see what you got. Line the ends up. And then I've got some places that are interference right now. So I'll take a Sharpie. And then you're gonna mark any high spot or low spot. And then when you take it back off, you'll know where to grind it at. All right, so I went ahead and chamfered the edges on this. Chamfered the edges of the frame, got cleaned up. Let's go ahead and burn these in.
All right, so I got this all boxed in. I think it looks a little bit better than it did before. Got all the ends nice and straight now. Everything lines up, everything's the same. So now let's go see about the cross member we're gonna put there. I don't know if any of y'all recognize this or not, but this was that big old gooseneck plate that was in the back of that F-250 I parted out. But when I got the axles out of for the junkyard scout, it's one big plate with two big bars welded to it. So I'm gonna get one of these bars off and that's gonna be my new rear cross member. All right, so I got this rear cross member in. I've just tacked it in right now. I do wanna say, I really think a one inch bar like this is overkill. It's probably excess weight. Maybe a piece of C-channel would be a better option, but this is what I got and it's free. I would like to cycle this somehow now though, before I go any farther and make sure this is gonna work. So I'm thinking I might take the U-bolts loose over here on the passenger side, jack up the frame of course, and then I'll let the frame come down and that'll kind of simulate the suspension compressing over on that side. And we'll see how close the diff gets to the gas tank. If everything clears, then I think I'm going to build a front cross member here. And then we'll have like two straps like we did before. And then maybe a strap across the top just to keep it from bouncing around. I've also got to figure out some kind of skid plate ideal, which I think I have an idea that's going to work for that. So let's go ahead and pop the mu bolts loose and we'll see what this thing does. All right, so right now the rear cross member is sitting at, we'll call it 23 and 5 eighths. All right, so I've let it down to the point that it's not on the jack anymore. The rest of the suspension and the frame and stuff is holding it where it's at. So you can see the clearance we got now, which I can still get my hand between it. I'm still pretty happy with where that's at, especially since this edge is way back in front of this now. That's a lot better position. Now, if I put some weight on it, that puts us at about 20 inches and we still have pretty decent clearance there. And like I said, we really only have like three inches in these shocks right now. So I'm gonna set my bump stops to around three inches. So if right now we're down roughly three and five eighths and we still have maybe an inch or so of clearance, maybe a little more than that before it hits. Now I do know as the suspension compresses, it does move back a little bit, but I feel good about this. I don't think it's gonna hit anything. I think it's gonna clear. It looks like everything's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all this back together. I'm gonna find me something to make a cross member right here. And that'll have this gas tank settled in place where it's gonna live at. I don't think there's any way anybody can say that the rear of this Jeep frame is not structurally sound anymore. I went ahead and plated on back so I could put this rear cross member in. I thought it made more sense to put the rear cross member on top of the plate versus sticking it up inside the C channel and then plating around it. Now I know the material I use for these cross members for this rear one and this middle one 
are way overkill. The main reason I used them is because they're free. I already had them. Also, it is really nice to have a thicker piece of material you can actually drill and tap into. I know my recovery point back here is way stronger now. The only thing I didn't really show y'all on camera is to set the position of this cross member of this middle one. I did put the tank back in and then I stuck it in and I tapped it around to where it was as close to the tank as I could get where I could still get the tank out from underneath. I'm in the home stretch of this now though. I've got to make two bands go underneath, one on top that'll secure everything. And then I think I'm going to do something with that skid plate to kind of just finish this thing off to tie it all together. So let's go ahead, grab some strap material and get them things cut. I got one of my straps made up here. I didn't film it because honestly I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this. I was just going to bend it just like how I did my seat frames over there. Do a relief cut, bend it, and then weld it up. Something with this metal though, it's too brittle. It's the same steel and the same supplier, but it just kept snapping off. So what I ended up doing is I pieced it together. So I cut this piece, this piece, the piece that goes underneath, then come over here. And then we got a piece that comes up and then one more piece. This is long. This is going to get trimmed off. But once I had it all pieced together, I actually tacked it in place. So that way I could do some little pilot holes and mark where everything's going to go on this cross member. I told myself where I welded this in, I was going to measure out for the two holes that were going here. And I totally forgot to do it. Luckily, I've got my little right angle drill here, which will fit up in there. If you're doing this, don't be stupid like me. Drill them holes before you weld that in. And then you ain't got a fool with the drilling upside down like that and all that mess. Now this side won't be as bad because I ain't got the differential there. But this side, it was a little difficult. But I got my pilot hole there now. So I'm going to cut them tack welds, take that back off. And I should be able to just copy exactly what I did there off the Jeep. That'll be this strap. And then I'm going to have one strap that goes over the top. So I got the strap back off here, pulled the tank out. I went ahead and drilled my holes, my mountain holes. So I'm gonna have one here and two here on the back side of the Jeep. So when I made this one, I built it on the Jeep, like I was saying, and I just kind of built it piece by piece, wrapped it around until everything fit really good. Now the right way to build this would actually be with like a press brake. Unfortunately, I don't have one and it's just like with the tubing bender. I can't justify spending two or $300 on a press brake to make some little gas tank straps. This material is really rigid. I'm not worried about it bending. It's quarter inch, which is way more than what I'm gonna need. I'm gonna show y'all why I went with quarter inch here in a minute. But for right now, I need to make one more of these. So I'm gonna try and make the second one just like this first one, but on the table. And I'm just gonna build it a piece at a time, match everything up. And hopefully I end up with two straps that are exactly the same. All right, y'all, so you can question my methods, but you can't question my results. This is an exact copy, or as close as I could get it to the one I made first. I held it up there, everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes in this one just like I got here. Drill and type the holes like I got in my cross members. I'll put the tank back in, and then I can figure out that top strap. So I got both the bottom straps done and bolted in. That all looks real good. Got them bolted from underneath here. 
I do have to trim the ends, but when I take them back off, I'm gonna trim that little excess off. Got my top strap and I only used eighth inch for it. The same stuff I've been boxing the frame in with because it doesn't need to be as beefy as these are. These are carrying all the weight. This is just to make sure it doesn't work its way up or something like that. Now I did put bolts on top for this, which is gonna be more aggravating to get off, especially this one with the body on. But I really don't see why I'm ever gonna have to take this strap off. Now I was thinking about putting rubber under here and under those lower ones. I might just paint everything and then spray the surfaces that contact the tank with like a rubberized undercoating. That will keep squeaks and rubbing and everything to a minimum. Now there's one more thing we got left to do here and that is protect right here because when you're coming down on something, we need some protection like that skid plate provided. I'm trying really hard to make sure this doesn't stick out past the springs, out past the shackles. So we're still inside there, but it's close. What I'm thinking, I'm going to get a piece of this skid plate here, probably cut it off, maybe like right here, and then take some of that wrap, probably take it down to where the tank mounts are, or probably cut it off like right here. And then we'll have this whole wrap right there. And then I'm gonna drill and tap in a few spots and actually mount it to the straps. So I'll tie the straps together, keep them nice and tight, and then we'll have a nice wrap up under here and that'll protect the bottom of this tank. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm really happy this happened. It is a pain in the butt. I had to take all this back apart. I had to redo a job I've already done. But to be honest with you, this is a much better design than what I had before. Before, it was gonna be really hard to pull the tank out from under the Jeep. But with this design, you really just drop these two straps and this skid plate just stays with the straps and then the tank comes out. It's a lot easier than I had it before. I'm also glad I went ahead and took the time to box in all this frame back here Go ahead and put a rear cross member back in. Now, I do want to say one more time, I know my cross members are way too big. It's unnecessary weight, but it's free. I already had the material on hand. Just like the bolts I used in the skid plate, those are fine thread 5 16 button heads, and they're way too long, but I had them that were free. So I just went ahead and used them, cut them the length. When I originally had this idea and I was putting it together and making the video, I really wanted to give y'all just a bolt-on option for a rear gas tank setup. I tried my best to use the stock parts as they came in the mail, so there's no fabrication. The way I see it, there's really only like three good options to do a rear gas tank swap in one of these old Willys Jeeps. One, obviously you can do it like I did. You can buy the stock tank. I wasn't fool with buying the stock skid plate. I'd make my own skid plate. I just used that because I already had it. The second option would be finding either an appropriately sized fuel cell or making your own fuel tank and mounting it back here in a similar way I just did. Or finally, you can do the bolt-in stock CJ5 stuff like I did in my original video, but you're gonna need a lot of lift. There's a guy on Instagram, he sent me some pictures of his Jeep. He made it look super easy. It looked really good. There's plenty of axle clearance, but I'm gonna guess he probably had at least four to six inches over stock. I'm not quite sure. Obviously, I gotta take all this back apart, paint everything, put the bumper back on, do one final assembly back here, and then I'll be done with it. But I think that's a project for another day. 
So I appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all next time.